Hi everyone, this is an introductory video from dwiconcepts.com. For the upcoming series of video tutorials, this will act as a content or table index for the items we are going to learn. In this series of tutorials, we will learn how to implement various ETL scenarios in a data warehouse based on dimensional modeling. Here SAP data services will be used as our ETL tool of choice to illustrate and implement the various data warehousing scenarios. So first we will start with dimension tables. First we will implement slowly changing dimension table of type 1 based on full extraction from the source. In this case we will implement a sample product dimension table. Next we will design the same ETL using the DS specific transforms. So to implement the SCD type 1 we will use data services inbuilt transforms like table comparison. Next we will see how to design the SCD type 1 slowly changing dimension of type 1 based on CDC from source. Here we will use a batch load control table and as previously we will next replicate the same scenario using DS inbuilt transforms to implement the SCD1. After that we will illustrate how to populate the dead dimension which is one of the most important dimensions in any data warehouse. Here we will use data services inbuilt transform called the date generation. Then we will design a slowly changing dimension of type 2. Here we will consider a customer dimension table. Same like previously we will replicate one more using data services specific transforms like table comparison and history preservations. Once we implement the full extraction from the source scenario, we will design the same based on the incremental or change data capture from the source table. All the upcoming videos will illustrate in details the implementation steps, so don't worry. Here we will focus more on the data warehousing scenarios implementation rather than the ETL framework which is also uh, also included as a part of the upcoming videos. Next we will design a rapidly changing dimension table. Here we will consider a few attributes of the customer table are rapidly changing for which we will handle using a jump dimension and a mini dimension. On the other hand, some of the attributes are slowly changing in nature for which we want to maintain the history. For that case, we will implement using the slowly changing dimension of type 2. So finally, we move to the fact tables in a data warehouse. First of all, we will design an incident fact table. Here we will consider a sales fact for an example. Next we will learn how to design a snapshot fact table. In this case, we will consider a customer fact table for example. Next we will learn how to implement ETL for aggregating a fact table. So in this example we will demonstrate the aggregation of daily sales fact to monthly level or granularity. Next we will learn how to handle or solve the problem of early arriving fact. So don't worry everything will be discussed in detail in each of the individual video tutorials. For the time being, let us list out the topics we are going to learn. Next, we will learn how to implement incremental aggregation of monthly fact tables loaded on a weekly basis. Next, we also need to know how to design a fact table to handle the source site corrections coming in. Uh, that is it, we have covered all the typical data warehousing ETL scenarios. Next we will have another section which deals with some typical ETL cases. Here we will see all the implementations specific to data, uh, data services. So like dynamic lookup for slowly changing dimension of type 1, we will learn how to implement dynamic lookup for slowly changing dimension of type 2 using data services. Next we will learn how to implement persistent cache lookup using data services. Also we will illustrate how to handle target based load ordering or constraint based loading 
in data services. Next, we will design a best practices ETL framework to support our data warehouse. It should be a robust and flexible ETL framework which should handle error and have the capability for recoverability and restartability and should also provide the mechanism for data reconciliation and also provide the execution statistics. So we will get into more details and finally we will demonstrate the performance tuning activities perform, uh, performed during the ETL implementations of a data warehouse and in this case we will specifically discuss on data services. So the performance tuning section will be much on the data services side. So that is it, uh, stay tuned for the upcoming video series. For more details visit dwbiconcepts.com. Thank you.